So my question was actually, why did it took so long? You know, I mean, it's, ah, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, on one hand, we've been looking at many research on how we do, but where are really the interventions in the publications? Basically, you could say it didn't take so long because we are doing a lot of interventions. Yes, we are. On a scientific base, I would say, no, it's not out there, not enough. But yes, I do realize, as working in cl clinically, we're doing a lot of interventions, great projects, but somehow we might not have the time to write it up and share it with others. And this is possibly one of the forums where we would share our, our great work. Um, is it because possibly small groups of children dying? I mean, yes. I mean, uh, people would not like to give big grants monies on a small group of children. Is it just, just lack of money? Is it do we have a lack of researchers, nurse researchers? Or is it like it's a bit of a tricky thing and a bit provocable? We like the, the real ICU stuff. I mean, and if life care, fine. No, give me a patient on ECMO who survives. I mean, that, this is a bit... Um, uh, in, uh, the attitude of us nurses. So tell me, is it still a cry, yes or not? I'm not sure. Um, and I, I'm happy to argue with this position whether we have a lack of evidence on interventions. Now, if you want to measure the quality of quali end of life care, we, we, we need tools. And, and, and this is about, it's, it's, it's a process we're in at the moment. I mean, We've done lots of research how we're doing. Now we're, uh, we have a turning point that we want to improve care in interventions, but we need to measure the interventions, and we need validated tools. So one of the tools is uh, by Kathleen Meert Mayer, uh, developed. It's called the Bereaved Parent Needs Assessment Tool, 68 Items Instrument Measuring Parents' Needs and Need Fulfillments Around the Time of Death of a Child. The, B, the BPNA um, is to identify specific areas of parental needs which supportive interventions may be needed. So they argue on a scale of one to five, those statements related to fulfillment support scored below four would actually areas where we should actually try to identify interventions. Now, it's 68, it's quite a long uh, questionnaire, but here are a few of the, let's say, below four mean scores, as they suggested, where we should take a look at. Now, if you closely look at these interventions, um, for example, um, to, a to be able to sleep in my child's room, well, yes, in America, possibly the PICUs have all single bedded rooms, while in, the, in Europe we don't have it. Well, would we have another three million to build a new PICU everywhere? Is that an intervention that's feasible for us nurses? So some interventions listed here are organizational types we might have less influence in. Um, there's another one here at the end, at the bottom of the 86 uh, scale, who are all below four, to blame someone for my child's death. Well, that's that's sort of the, the sort of almost the faith and the guidance which, which we can give as an intervention, possibly on a nursing and phys, uh, physician level. And I think basically any intervention which we should look at should be a multidisciplinary intervention. So they, they're, they're, this, this, this paper gives you at least for, food for thought to look at uh, interventions. There's another um, uh, measurements tool that just came out. Um, it's online ahead of print at the Journal of Pain and Symptoms. It's a pediatric intensive care unit quality of dying and death 20. Now, there is an adult version called the QODD20. Now, this group uh, acknowledged that actually that is developed in adult intensive care for family members of adult patients. And if you read that paper in the introduction, the argument is, listen, we need to go back to our parents, do focus groups, um, and do a literature review because uh, we think that the, the impact and developing such a questionnaire is completely different between adult intensive care and the pediatric intensive care. So they did indeed here, they look at... Um, uh, all these intervention studies like focus groups, uh, interviews with parents, literature reviews, and they came up with a, a number of domains which would be important to include in that questionnaire. 
So now here is the questionnaire I can show you. I'm not, you, yeah, you can read it. Um, it's then again developed in 10 domains like pain, communication, uh, this decision of withdrawal, and so forth. Um, and then it gives actually all sub, subheadings, uh, statements within the domains. Um, so this is what they believe a validated and a reliable tool to measure actually the quality of death in the ICU. I've been challenging you, where are our interventions? What is going on? And then I recently come across um, the, in critical care medicine from Kathleen Meert and her group again, uh, talking about this new novel intervention, new framework for physician parent follow-up meetings after a child death. Um, my first impression was, what? 2014, it's published out, forget it. In Holland, we're doing that over. It's standard practice that we do have follow-up meetings six weeks after the death of the child in all PICUs, and it's a multidisciplinary thing. We haven't published that widely. And now here, suddenly, they talk about a physician-parent follow-up. Now, I would argue, help. Because where are we nurses? Shouldn't it be nurses involved? Should it be included in the meetings? At least where I worked in Rotterdam before is that it was almost a nurse-led intervention where nurses and the physician were collaboratively working on the follow-up meetings. And I think, yeah, that's nice. So participants, they would say, study participants in this study included critical care attending physicians, bereaved parents, and meeting guests invited by physicians or parents. And I thought, yeah, I'm happy to argue that because it shouldn't be physician-led at the end. Uh, basically, my argument would be that um, it's a, it's a nurse-led intervention that should be um, multidisciplinary uh, organized. Now, now, here they look at uh, the physician adherence to the framework. There was a training program for physicians, and they observed uh, the, um, the follow-up uh, uh, talks with the parents by video recording, and then they scored actually on the video recording a few issues like opening the meeting, were the family members welcomed, um, um, during the meeting, what kind of issues during the meeting were actually uh, present or were not done or what not even appropriate. Because um, basically, yes, it's good to, if you have an interventional program related to education by, in this case, physicians, you would evaluate that possibly by a video recording. I'm almost coming to the close because I do believe that we do have a lot of good interventions going on about end-of-life care. However, it's not that widely published out there for, for all our colleagues. But I think uh, the EAPS Congress here, we do have some very well examples. Um, and I take the example of uh, Cindy and Kim, who are actually done a European survey in NICU related to uh, infant deaths. Now, we talked about this follow-up talk. And if you look really on the follow-up talk, you see, 80% of all these NICUs who reply do have follow-up meetings with parents. And I th so that is actually the, the evidence that which is out there. But we haven't possibly evaluated how well these follow-up talks are uh, uh, perceived by our parents. So I leave you with this moment here, with this um, statement. I always use this slide because I do believe that caring for a, death, a dying child is one of the most difficult responsibilities we face, and, and it has uh, several implications. So uh, thank you very much for your attention.